The year is 1945. The world stands at a pivotal moment in history. World War II, the deadliest conflict in human history, has finally ended. The war claimed millions of lives and left countless others scarred, both physically and emotionally. The Allied powers, led by the United States, Great Britain and the Soviet Union, emerged victorious against the Axis powers. Their unity during the war was a beacon of hope for many. Yet, amidst the celebrations of victory, a new global order was taking shape, one marked by suspicion and rivalry. The joy of victory was tempered by the realization of the immense task of rebuilding ahead. The wartime alliance between the Western powers and the Soviet Union began to crumble, revealing deep-seated ideological and geopolitical tensions. The seeds of future conflicts were being sown. The devastation of the war was immense. Cities were reduced to rubble and entire communities were displaced. The scars of war were visible everywhere. Europe lay in ruins, its economies shattered and its social fabric torn. The continent faced a long and arduous journey toward recovery. The United States and the Soviet Union emerged from the conflict as the world's two dominant superpowers, each possessing vast military and economic might. Their influence would shape global politics for decades to come. Both nations sought to shape the post-war world in their image, leading to a clash of ideologies and national interests. This rivalry would soon permeate every corner of the globe. The United States, under President Harry S. Truman, championed democracy and capitalism. It believed in the principles of free markets and individual freedoms. It sought to rebuild Europe and contain the spread of Soviet influence. The Marshall Plan was a significant effort to provide economic assistance and stabilize the region. The Soviet Union, led by Joseph Stalin, aimed to expand its sphere of control and promote communist ideology. It sought to create a buffer zone of friendly governments in Eastern Europe. This fundamental clash of visions set the stage for what would become known as the Cold War, a period of intense rivalry and ideological conflict that would define the latter half of the 20th century. The world was now divided into two opposing camps, each vying for supremacy. At the heart of the escalating tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union lay a fundamental ideological chasm that would shape global politics for decades to come. The two superpowers represented diametrically opposed political and economic systems, each with its own distinct worldview and set of values. This stark contrast was not just a matter of policy, but a deep-seated belief in the superiority of their respective ways of life. These ideological differences were not merely abstract concepts, they had profound practical implications for the way each nation conducted its domestic and foreign policy. The clash of ideologies influenced every decision from economic strategies to military alliances. The United States, a capitalist democracy, placed a high value on individual liberty, free enterprise and representative government. This system was built on the belief that personal freedom and economic opportunity were the cornerstones of a prosperous society. The American system emphasized private property rights, competition in the marketplace and the pursuit of individual wealth and happiness. This belief in the power of the individual to shape their own destiny was a driving force behind American innovation and economic growth. The U.S. Constitution guaranteed freedom of speech, religion, and the press, enshrining democratic principles that were seen as essential to protecting individual rights. These freedoms were not just legal guarantees, but were deeply ingrained in the American psyche. This emphasis on individual rights and freedoms shaped America's vision for the post-war world. The United States sought to promote democracy and capitalism globally, believing that these systems would lead to peace and prosperity. In contrast, the Soviet Union, under Stalin's iron grip, adhered to a communist ideology that emphasized state control, collectivism, and the pursuit of a classless society. This vision was rooted in the belief that true equality could only be achieved through the abolition of private property and the centralization of power. The Soviet system abolished private property, centralized economic planning in the hands of the state, and suppressed dissent and opposition. This approach was seen as necessary to prevent the exploitation and inequality inherent in capitalist systems. The Communist Party held absolute power, controlling all aspects of Soviet life. This control extended to the economy, the media, and even personal freedoms, with the state dictating nearly every aspect of daily life.
This emphasis on state power and collectivism drove the Soviet Union's expansionist policies in Eastern Europe. The Soviets sought to create a buffer zone of friendly governments to protect against potential threats from the West. This ideological divide colored every aspect of the relationship between the two superpowers. Each side viewed the other's system as a direct threat to their way of life and sought to counteract it at every turn. The United States viewed the Soviet Union as a totalitarian state, bent on exporting its communist ideology and subjugating other nations. This perception fueled a sense of urgency to contain the spread of communism and protect democratic values. The Soviet Union, in turn, saw the United States as an imperialist power, seeking to dominate the world through its economic and military might. This belief was reinforced by American actions that the Soviets interpreted as aggressive and expansionist. This fundamental clash of ideologies fueled mutual suspicion and distrust, making cooperation increasingly difficult. The resulting Cold War was characterized by a constant state of tension with both sides preparing for the possibility of conflict while engaging in a fierce battle for influence around the globe. The wartime alliance between the United States, Great Britain and the Soviet Union, though strained at times, had held together against the common enemy of Nazi Germany. This alliance was a crucial factor in the eventual defeat of the Axis powers, as the combined military and economic might of these nations proved too formidable for Nazi Germany to withstand. However, as the war drew to a close, the underlying tensions and mistrust between the Allied powers became increasingly apparent. The ideological differences between the capitalist West and the communist East, which had been set aside during the war, began to resurface with renewed vigor. Three key events in 1945 and 1946 exposed the growing rift between the West and the Soviet Union, setting the stage for the Cold War. These events were pivotal in shaping the geopolitical landscape of the post-war world and had long-lasting implications for international relations. The first of these events was the Yalta Conference, held in February 1945 in the Crimea. This conference was a critical moment in the negotiations over the post-war order and the future of Europe. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Prime Minister Winston Churchill and Premier Joseph Stalin met to discuss the post-war order in Europe. The leaders aimed to reach a consensus on how to manage the territories liberated from Nazi control and to establish a framework for lasting peace. While the conference produced agreements on the establishment of the United Nations and the division of Germany into occupation zones, it also revealed significant disagreements over the future of Eastern Europe. The Western Allies were particularly concerned about Soviet intentions in the region. Stalin insisted on Soviet influence in the region, a demand that raised concerns among the Western Allies. The Soviet leaders' insistence on a sphere of influence in Eastern Europe was seen as a direct challenge to the principles of self-determination and democratic governance. The Potsdam Conference, held in July and August 1945, further highlighted the growing divide. This conference was marked by a change in leadership, with President Harry S. Truman now representing the United States following Roosevelt's death in April. With President Truman now representing the United States, the Allies met again to finalize the post-war settlement. The discussions at Potsdam were crucial in determining the fate of Germany and the broader European continent. However, tensions over the implementation of the Yalta agreements, particularly regarding the political future of Poland, created a contentious atmosphere. The Western Allies were wary of Soviet intentions, fearing that Stalin's promises of free elections in Eastern Europe would not be honored. The Potsdam Conference ended with a fragile agreement, but also with a heightened sense of suspicion between the former Allies. The unresolved issues and mutual distrust set the stage for the emerging Cold War. The final blow to the wartime alliance came in March 1946, when Winston Churchill, in a speech in Fulton, Missouri, famously declared that an iron curtain had descended across Europe, dividing the continent between the communist East and the capitalist West. This speech was a stark acknowledgement of the new reality facing the world. Churchill's speech, delivered with Truman's tacit approval, marked a turning point in East-West relations. 
It was a clear signal that the Western powers were no longer willing to accommodate Soviet expansionism and were prepared to take a stand against it. It signaled the West's hardening stance against Soviet expansionism and solidified the perception of a world divided into two hostile camps. The Iron Curtain became a powerful symbol of the ideological and physical division that would define the Cold War era, shaping the policies and alliances of nations for decades to come.